Yes, you read the title right. The Super Auto caught fire. Let's talk about it. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and after a week of thrashing to get the axle fixed on this thing and get the six speed put back in and the turbo 400 taken back out, the super auto caught fire. And we're going to talk about what happened so it could be something that's it's avoidable but it was also kind of a freak accident one and I wouldn't say a million but it shouldn't have happened and it's not that I didn't take the necessary steps to be safe it just happened. And then we'll also go over what started the fire, what caused it to get even bigger. And, uh, you know, it took me a three pound and a two pound fire extinguisher to put it out. That's a good reason to always have a fire extinguisher in your vehicle, whether or not it's modified or not, because this, the way this started could happen on any vehicle. It was not a result directly related to the modifications. That's what's worrisome about it. This could be something that happens to your own vehicle just after doing something like an oil change. Uh, you know, because you've got to be aware of the fact that almost every single fluid that is underneath the uh, hood of a car will cause a flash fire. Engine oil, transmission oil, uh, let's see, even R34 or R134 refrigerant, the oil that is used to lubricate your compressor will start a flash fire in the engine bay. Brake fluid, that will start a flash fire. Your radiator coolant, that will start a flash fire. About the only thing, surprisingly, that will not start a flash fire in most situations is your windshield washer. And that's because the methanol in which your washer fluid has a tendency to evaporate faster than the water. And so the water drenches itself. Now, if you get above that fabled 50-50 blend that we've talked about in mixing water and methanol, then you're going to have a problem on your hands and you're not going to be able to see the fire. Luckily, we could see the fire in this one. Even though it did melt a water methanol line, that did not add to the fire because our blend was set at 50-50. So keep in mind, keep a fire extinguisher in all of your vehicles and in fact not only did I have a three pound in there I've got one of these flare style fire extinguishers they're a little bit pricey but they're super small they're supposed to work very well I did not get to use this I'm glad I didn't have to use it and luckily the hood wasn't latched so I was able to get the hood up and get the fire out on this but let's go over and take a look at what started this fire Okay, so this is the Turbo 400 that's out of the truck. We put the 6L80 in, but it happens to use a low car dipstick just like the 6L80. And there's an inherent flaw with these low car dipsticks. This one may be not as bad because it has the locking one on there, or it may be worse. But on the non-locking one, it comes with this rubber tube with an aluminum fitting that slides down in the dipstick hole. That's all well and good, except it causes a couple of issues. For one, if you have a low, start, low car uh, dipstick like this, it takes forever to fill a transmission up. If you've got to put eight quarts in this thing, be prepared to spend about two hours filling that thing up. I am not kidding. Whenever you have to do it with this thing, it's even worse. But if you get fluid backed up to the point where you can see it in this tube, what will happen is it'll start leaking out of this fitting and it so, slowly soaks down the braided dipstick tube. You won't necessarily see a leak on it. It can, in, in fact, it can coat this whole dipstick down with ATF fluid and you won't really be able to tell because, I mean, it just doesn't drip off. So what ended up happening was, is I had to put about five quarts in to top up the 6L80 after I got it installed using this and it took me about an hour. Uh, taking my time, trying not to get fluid backed up in this, uh, but it happened a couple times and it caused it to leak out and get on the dipstick. Well, then I went over, fired the truck up, backed it out of the garage, uh, let it warm up to temp. It idled for about 15 minutes, no problem whatsoever. Pulled it back into the garage, shut it off, and was over on my computer when about four or five minutes later, uh, my wife, Mrs. Garage, came out and she said, the truck is on fire. And I said, oh no, it's probably just burning off a little extra oil uh, because there was you know, a uh, PB blaster and stuff on a bunch of bolts and things like that. I was like, that's probably normal. Then I look over and realize the whole side of the garage is now 
encased in smoke and you could literally see fire dripping out from beneath the truck. So let's go look at that and we'll talk about what happened next. So fire is pouring out from the bottom of it. The hood is actually in a closed position like this, but it's not fully latched. And so obviously I'm a little bit worried about just popping this thing straight up. I can see the flames underneath. So I grabbed the first fire extinguisher, which was in the back of the truck while Katie ran around and found another one out of the kitchen for me and proceeded to get underneath the truck and spray up towards where the fire source was happening. And in fact, most of the fire was contained to the stuff that was dripping. I don't know how well you can see back here, but look at everything that melted. That is what caused the majority of it because you can see back there is the main power feed wire that goes over to the fuse distribution blocks. That was melted down. And then a lot of the auxiliary wiring that I had added over the years for different things melted down also. And so we had a basically direct to ground short there that was melting everything that's plastic, causing that stuff to light on fire, drip down, and it just kept on going and going. And so I get the hood opened up, hit it with a fire extinguisher up top, make sure there's no fire, but it's still shooting sparks everywhere. Luckily I had a 10 millimeter sitting nearby. I was able to get the negative lead unhooked rather quickly. And then after that, I had to find a pair of gloves to pull the wire off because it was so hot and melted. In fact, these terminals are melted to the battery in multiple spots. It is just an absolute mess. But luckily we were in the process of kind of dialing this thing back. We weren't going to need, you know, a 13, 1400 uh, horsepower pickup truck anymore. And so we were dialing some of the power back. We were going to go to a smaller blower, if not even over to an LT4 style setup on this. And a lot of the existing wire that got burnt was added wire for uh, different systems that we're not going to need moving forward. So I think we'll be able to gut a lot of this wiring out go back in with a factory engine harness, which is not that complicated uh, to swap out. It goes over from the fuse box in the ECU and hits all of your points. For the most part, I would think that the factory wires were pretty good, except there is one leg that comes down, goes to uh, some of the stuff over here, I think. But for about 300 bucks, I went ahead and got one of those ordered. And then of course we need the new power wire, which I ordered the power harness and the ground harness. We'll replace those and we'll go from there and see what all else needs to be swapped out after we get a bunch of this stuff out of the way once it dries off. I just got done hosing all the uh, dry chemical extinguisher dust off of the top end here just to clean it up a little bit to make it a little easier to clean up. So could have been a lot worse if this had been on the side of the highway. I may have not had enough fire extinguisher to get it out completely. That's one fear that I always have, uh, you know, and the big thing in this situation is it was in the garage whenever it happened. And so, of course, I was concerned about the house, things like that. And so I was almost to the point where I was ready. If we had to, we were just going to push it out of the garage and let it burn. Uh, obviously, you never want that to happen. But once I got the hood open and saw that it was not a, as bad a situation as I thought, we got everything uh, extinguished and it looks worse than it is. You know, we're going to need some new rubber, a new cow trim piece. We'll pull down the hood mat on this thing because it's toast. Uh, it did not get to the point where this did its job. The design of this is a lot of times these plugs will burn out and that'll fall down and, and help to suppress the fire. Uh, you know, you can see kind of in some spots over on the side where it uh, started to, to deteriorate from the heat and Surprisingly enough, it even over on that right side, which could have uh, been attributed to some wiring uh, burning up over there and stuff like that. All in all, it sucks. It's not the end of the world. Uh, it's something that we can bounce back from. But, you know, whenever you have something like this that you put years and years of hard work into to see so much of it destroyed in less than a minute for the most part, uh, it's a little heartbreaking. You know, it takes you down a peg and makes you, you know, it, it makes it hard to even, I'll be honest with you, at that point in time, my initial thought was to pull the drivetrain out of it and have the, uh, the junkyard come haul the body off. I was so just mad at everything. You know, probably saw me referencing this thing as a bad penny a couple times because every time I turn around, it creates new problems for me. But whenever you get to this level of modification, that's what you kind of have to expect, so...
So that's been the latest adventure in the garage and you guys know me. I'm never going to hide anything from you guys whenever something happens. I'm going to expose it because it is always a learning opportunity. Uh, I'm lucky uh, that my wife came out and saw the fire whenever she did, brought my attention to it. We had fire extinguishers readily available. In fact, I've got a five, uh, five pack of five pounders showing up today to replace the two and three pound that we used on this. And so, uh, you know, it's always a good idea to go around, check all of your pressures on your fire extinguishers, make sure everything's good to go there, that you're not going to need one and not have one. You never think it would happen to you. I didn't think it would happen to me, even to the point where after I got done running this thing and I pulled it back into the garage, I crawled up underneath it with a shop light and looked for leaks and saw no leaks. Five minutes later, the thing is on fire, which is just mind blowing to me. I'm still kind of trying to come to grasp with the fact that it caught fire. Uh, but as I said, could have been a lot worse. I'm lucky not to have gotten hurt. None of my family got hurt. The truck is a item. And honestly, it didn't get hurt that bad. But even if it had burned down to the ground, as long as everybody was safe, you know, that's what's really important. So keep in mind to things like this, they can always happen. You know, do your due diligence, be safe out there. And, uh, you know, as always, I wanna say thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning. Unless your truck has been on fire, then you need to repair the wiring. Then get back to tuning. See you guys later.